Hello there, and welcome to the 14th episode of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast. It has been a little while since my last episode, and I feel like I should just apologize for that, because I know there are some people that are expecting and waiting for more episodes, so I am really sorry. I had a lot of what might be called life stuff happen in the past week, so I really haven't been able to put the time away to record anything, so I am very sorry about that. So, that said, I'd like to cover the previous episode's words. Those words were derivative, solicitous, husband, and monotony. Derivative, that means, and usually concerning an artist or art, but art that is imitative of the work of another person, and usually disproved of for that reason. So a derivative artist is an artist that usually has copied someone else, done the same as someone else, and is frowned upon for that reason. Solicitous, that means showing concern, showing interest for someone else. So it could mean caring or considerate. Husband, that's the verb husband, not the noun. That means to manage prudently, to use resources economically, to conserve. Monotony, monotony means a lack of variety or interest. It means boring or tedious, routine. Now, moving on to our new words. The first word for today is placate. Placate. That is spelled P L A C A T E. Placate. Now, to placate someone means to make them less angry or less hostile. Placate, think of it meaning to bring peace. Placate, to bring peace. You could say they am- attempted to placate the students or probably the angry students, with promises. Some synonyms of placate are pacify, calm, appease, mollify, soothe, win over, conciliate, to make peace with, to placate. So anytime you've angered someone, you've angered your parents for staying out too late or not doing your homework, and you've made that person angry, usually you do something to make them feel better. You make do something to make them forgive you, make make them less angry. When you're doing that, you're trying to placate them. Our second word is confound. That is spelled C-O-N-F-O-U-N-D. Confound. Confound means to cause surprise or confusion in someone. And usually with confound, when it's when you're causing surprise, when something is causing surprise in someone, confound usually means that that surprise is counter to the person's expectations. So in this sentence, the inflation figure confounded economic ana- analysts. Well, That means the inflation figure surprised the economic analysts, but it also means and implies that they expected something very different. So, confound, yes, it means to cause surprise or confusion, but it has this implied meaning that it really was the opposite of what you expected, basically. So, the rise in prices confounded expectations. So, you could also think of it meaning to prove a theory wrong, or to prove an expectation or prediction wrong. Some synonyms are invalidate, counter, contradict, negate, go against, quash, explode, demolish, shoot down. So, if you thought of, think of a time where you expected a certain sports team to win a competition. So you expected some 
football team to win the World Cup, for example, and then it was the complete other team that you didn't expect at all, your expectation was confounded. Confounded and confound also has a secondary meaning, and that is to mix up something with something else so that the individual elements become difficult to distinguish. So an example sentence would, would be, to nuke is now a cooking technique, as microwave radiation is confounded with nuclear radiation. So when people mention radiation, they're often confusing different kinds of radiation. So they're mixing up microwave radiation with nuclear radiation, and it no longer, the individual elements are no longer easily distinguished. Now, I don't want you to get too confused with that secondary meaning. The primary meaning is simply to ca cause surprise or confusion, usually in somebody else, and especially if the thing that causes surprise is not what you expected. You could think of confound and think of confuse. Both start in a similar way and both mean very similar things. If you are confounded by some event that's happened, you're also probably quite confused. Our third word is peripatetic. Peripatetic, one of my favorite, favorite words. It is spelled P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-T-I-C, peripatetic. Peripatetic means traveling from place to place, especially working or based in various places for short periods. My example phrase is the peripatetic nature of military life. And in fact, I feel sometimes like I've lived a fairly peripatetic life. Grew up in England, moved to France after leaving college, then moved to New York, lived in New York for a while, then moved to Germany in Berlin. From Berlin, I moved to London. And after London, I moved here to Orange County, where I am now. And I feel I've lived a fairly peripatetic kind of existence. Some synonyms are nomadic, itinerant, traveling, wandering, roving, roaming, migrant, unsettled. If you think of the classic example of a wandering drifter, or if you think of that movie about Christopher McCandless, I think it was called Into the Wild, about the, the boy who just quits university and goes wandering off on his own through America and ends up in the Alaskan wilderness. He was peripatetic. So, a good way of remembering that, it's a little tricky. I love the animal, the peregrine falcon. So, whenever I think of peripatetic, I think of the peregrine falcon. And being a bird, they travel around, obviously. And I think of that bird moving from place to place, flying from place to place. And then I think of peripatetic. Obviously, that isn't the best way of remembering it if you don't know what a peregrine falcon is. You could take a look, though, and see that it's quite an amazing animal. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to our fourth word, which is turgid. Turgid. Now, turgid is spelled T-U-R-G-I-D. Turgid means swollen, distended, or congested. So, you could think of anything that is filled up to bursting point, you can think of a water balloon that's been filled with water till it's almost about to burst, and it could be just described as being turgid. You could think of a river after a lot of rain, and that river is swollen and full of water. That river is turgid. Some synonyms for turgid are swollen, distended, tumescent, engorged, bloated, tumid. Often turgid can be used with the body. So if some limb becomes swollen, you've been bitten or you have some injury, that limb can become swollen with blood. It can become turgid. 
Turgid does have a bonus secondary meaning, and that is basically bombastic. And if you remember from one of our previous episodes, we learned what bombastic was. It meant some speech or writing that is overly ornate, too much detail, with little actual meaning. So turgid can mean tediously pompous, bombastic. So you could say some poet read some turgid verses on the death of Prince Albert. So that means pompous, overblown, inflated, pretentious. So turgid, our main meaning, and what it will mean most of the time, is swollen, engorged, bloated, tumid, and that secondary meaning is usually when referring to language or style of writing, means tediously pompous or bombastic. Now we'll move on to our four example sentences. In each of these sentences, I'll be referring to one of today's words, but without using that word. And I just want you to listen to the sentence, think about the meaning, think about the meanings of the words we've gone over today, and find out which sentence matches to which word. Traveling Mick never settled down. One season he would be in New York. When it got cold, he would make his way down south, to Florida for the winter. Then he might turn up in New Orleans, LA, or Seattle. After getting stung by a giant Japanese hornet, Sally's thumb became swollen and engorged with blood. After the polls had apparently shown him as the favourite for the election, the senator was shocked and confused when he only received a small fraction of the votes. I tried to calm the bull down by making it a peace offering of a handful of grass. Those were our four sentences. I hope that was pretty easy to work out. As always, I am really, really grateful and thankful for all, all the listeners I have and want to suggest that you send me an email if you have any questions, concerns, or even any positive comments. Again, I am really sorry that there's been a big delay between podcasts. I know many of you are on a timeline about your studying for the GRE, so I am I am sorry about that. But like I said, I do have a, a really busy full-time job. I'm a software engineer in video games, and as has happened a lot recently, I've had a lot of time where I've had to be on call or handling issues when I'm not technically at work, I'm at home. So that has definitely messed with my ability to make podcasts. So sorry about that. Like I always said, I really enjoy doing this and I do it because I love doing it and I want to help people. So I'm going to keep doing it as long as I have lungs and a mouth and so on, right? <laughs> so while I can still make this podcast and I still have words to go through and people are still listening, I'm going to make this podcast. So don't worry about there not being more episodes. There will be more episodes. So anyway, if you want to email me, you can do. I will reply. It's sam.fold at gmail.com. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.